Hey everyone, it's Dave Asprey with Bulletproof Radio. Today's cool fact of the day is that the color in movies is often color corrected so that it'll affect your emotions in a different way. And the first movie ever to do this was called Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And they adjusted the color in every single frame of the film to take what was green and turn it into a dusty brown to make it feel that way. And it took 11 entire weeks to do that. Now, for all I know, we're color correcting what I'm talking with right now, and I don't even know if my guys are doing it. Today's guest is awesome, and if you're watching on video, you've noticed that it's actually a live interview, which is amazing because uh, Brandon Routh, who you will probably see very soon here on Arrow season three, uh, and who also played the role of Superman, and that was Superman Returns, was it? That's correct, 2006. All right, so I'm actually sitting here in my makeshift biohacker labs while we're building the real biohacker labs with actually Superman. So, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited and happy to be here. Uh, thanks for coming up to my house to, to check this out. Uh, um, seriously, uh, we got the chance to meet in Vancouver. Uh, I was uh, really stoked when JJ Virgin introduced us. Yes. And. Uh, your story was was kind of amazing and i was uh, kind of touched to hear like how some of the techniques of biohacking had really worked for you and i thought it might be useful for people who are listening in their cars or people are watching on itunes or on youtube just to kind of hear like what the application of bulletproof does to someone you know who has you know obviously very high level performance working as an actor is crazy so like you know you grew up in iowa just like i think superman did and uh, <laughs> Okay, just very close. Yeah, yeah, you know, but but you're like, are those are those different states? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of corn in both of them. Uh, so just, I, I wanted to ask you about about your story and kind of how you got to be where you are, yeah. and then because you're here instead of on Skype, we're going to actually like hook you up to some electrodes and equipment, and we're going to actually biohack you. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get electrocuted and. Um... <laughs> Whatever else is going to happen, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> so how, how did you get into biohacking? Well, uh, uh, thank you to uh, my friend Adam Carell and his brother Eric. Uh, Adam, a uh, friend for a long time, we were at a bachelor party in August of, 2000, uh, of uh, 2013. Um, asked about if I tried this or heard about putting butter and coconut oil in my coffee. I'm like, are you crazy? Um, <laughs> He says, no, he, and he had on his phone the article uh, at that time, the post, uh, um, and I read it, and I was just kind of um, blown away by what you were talking about with fat, and my world was turned upside down, and I was intrigued. <laughs> Instead of being scared, I was like, what is this? So um, I, I, that following Monday, I think, I was traveling, and from that, two days after I heard it, I basically transformed my whole diet and way of eating and started on Bulletproof Coffee <laughs> and have had it every day with the exception of one day when I had two days when I've had tea instead of uh, uh, Bulletproof Coffee and um, started eating a lot more fat and um, turned my brain on, turned a light on in my brain that I didn't know was off. Um, it's like how I like to explain it and it's made uh, so many different changes for me, uh, allowed me to have so many different changes, not just in my energy um, and in my ability to communicate and um, remember things <laughs> and, and, and my social engagement, um, but also sleep and, uh, and many other ways. So um, that's, a, that's the short story, but so I've been basically bulletproof for a little over a year now okay. um, and uh, my, turning my family and all my friends as bulletproof as I can. My son is pretty bulletproof. Uh, How old is your son now? He's uh, two years old. Two years old. So a lot of this happened right when he was turning one. Um, we were starting to introduce, at six months you start to introduce solid food. So his avocado and banana and these kind of things, sweet potato. And we were getting to the point where we were deciding whether he was going to have uh, 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 animal protein, animal meat for the first time really. And I kind of had gone uh, back and forth throughout the years of, well, I'd never really been vegan or vegetarian, but I dabbled. I played a vegan. <laughs> uh, and so that made me start to think about that whole lifestyle, the raw vegan, and I'd sampled really good food on both sides. And um, in Los Angeles, uh, still, it's kind of some of the best food that you can get, the purest, cleanest food. And unfortunately, vegan unfortunately it's only you can get uh, in a vegan restaurant, and there aren't any carnivorous restaurants that really do too much of that. So 
I was doing this kind of exploration about how I felt about it. Um, saw this video on YouTube of this kid questioning what beef was, and that kind of I said, "Wow, maybe I should let my son have this choice." Then I read some things about processed foods, because we give him these little puffs, these little rice puffs, to help with dexterity, and learned about the whole extrusion process, mm -hmm. Western A. Price stuff. Started reading about grains and all this stuff, and then it was a couple days after that that my buddy introduced me to the bulletproof coffee. Those two things crossed um, paths and explosions in my head, and now I am where I am. And he's eating a, lo a lot of he's fish, beef, a little bit of chicken, high fat, berries. He's incredibly it, dense and intelligent the, the, and vocal. And the density you noticed? Yes. Um, Tell me more about because that. Because he weighs, he's, so he's 25 months old, I suppose, and he must weigh 36 pounds, and he's about 36 inches tall. But he's about three feet tall. But he's not unusually chubby. No, at no, all, no. Right? He's yeah. he's just stocky. Yeah. Um, and I don't know where he packs away. It's in his bone. I mean, it's yeah. in his bone density. And uh, he loves all types of foods, which is the exciting thing. One of my crowning victories for my wife and I is that he says yummy, yummy water all the time. You know, <laughs> so that's that's a very good thing um, to have that, that, a, a victory. And he has. Uh, over his egg every morning. Um, it's basically his breakfast. Uh, and he's incredibly vocal for other reasons, not just his diet, but I yeah. think that's helped with his linguistic skills. Also, us just talking to him is a, a practice that we used. Not that we're here to talk about raising children, but he um, communicates very well at, a, at an early age and has a big vocabulary for. So, so you, you brought bringing fat in for, for kids as well as for yourself. I and mean, you, you noticed, obviously, if you went that hardcore after basically two days of increasing saturated fat in your diet, it was doing something your biology liked. Like, like it felt right. It felt right. Yeah. I, I noticed that hunger changed. So when it was one of the first things I noticed, I didn't have sugar cravings as badly because I was getting full. And I wouldn't eat if, as long as I had my, my vegetables and my uh, fat on my vegetables and things with dinner. Traditional dessert didn't sound as good because I was satiated, yeah. and so I'd have a couple bites of dark chocolate or whatever it was, and I'd be satiated. Um, and I can notice when I don't have enough fat; um, those are days when I feel, oh, I could really have something sweet, and that'd be really good, because it's not um, I'm not getting enough from the fat. Also, just hunger. Period. Like I could, 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 I could go seven, eight hours without eating. Not that that anybody should do that, but there are times when that happens, and I yeah. didn't lose my mind. I didn't get upset. I didn't get cranky like I used to all the time. Um, that really that was, helped with that. It's significant because I realized that, I, man, I was kind of a grumpy person sometimes and I didn't realize it. That's the other thing that eating this way has helped me realize is um, being much more aware of myself because um, instead of being anxious and fearful and some of these other things, um, my brain and cognition is more in control so I have more energy to spend focusing inward and seeing how I'm reflecting myself throughout the world. You know, I was—I uh, always thought I was like a social person, but I kind of would be kind of a wallflower in group and friendly situations. Like m amongst my friends, I would sit back and listen to conversations. Now I'm much more eager uh, to engage in conversation. Wow! A lot of times because I'm talking about bulletproof stuff, which I'm very passionate about. <laughs> just like nonstop, my friends are like, "Well, Brandon, just shut up. He used to never talk, and now he just won't shut up." Um, so that's <laughs> been a big shift as well. So and then there's a the whole work stuff. But. Uh, so that, that's got to make a difference though when you're like on the set or something because you know, if you're in costume, uh, I'm just guessing I've not really been on a set in a real meaningful way, mm -hmm. but you know, you're, you're in a place where you're not going to just pause and eat because you've got cameras and budgets and whatever. So to be able to keep your cool and keep your brain for seven or eight hours, I, I know for the little stuff I do, it's still liberating for me, but in, in kind of a high pressure situation, that has to have made a difference. It absolutely has. I mean, I am an actor, it's much different than most people's profession, but stresses and anxieties, they're all similar no matter yeah. what field you work in, right? So there's pressure, um, pressure to perform, um, know your lines, uh, look good, all of these things. And then on top of that, you have to be able to communicate with people. You have to be friend, you don't have to, but it's in your best interest to be friendly to all the crew, right. know their names if you can. Um, they're a lot and they're interchanging, so that's a challenge, but I like to do that when I can. Uh, so there are a lot of demands. And diet is always a hard thing because you know they have somebody making you food, they have catering and they have craft service, which is a, but that's full, filled of, filled with sugary stuff, yeah. donuts, things you can't eat, and even the catering, even though they're amazing chefs, the quality, food quality is not 
up to my standards now. And, and, and so I've had to make modifications. And it's while at the beginning I think I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Um, living this way and eating this way, I've found my own go-arounds and the way to, that it works for me. So I bring a lot of my own food. I source when I go to a new place. I search out a butcher shop. I go to the grocery stores. I find where I can get grass-fed this, pastured this, organic, and I'll bring it. I'll buy it myself at my own expense. It's worth it to me, and I'll take it, and I'll have them. Thankfully, they're great, and they make it for me. So do people think that you're obsessive-compulsive about food? Uh, my wife would probably say that uh, at the beginning of this because I was... Yeah. Over the, I was like, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm eating fat. She's like, well, just, just slow down. You sound like a crazy person. And I was like, no, I don't. Like, this is awesome. I feel great. And I was. I was a little crazy. You're right, Courtney. Um, and so I had to walk myself back off the crazy, uh, uh, the crazy train. And I've you know modified a little bit, yeah. but that, that's but also idea. she's been able to see because I've done testing now. She's like, wow, your cholesterol is like amazing, and you haven't had any effects, and I see so many benefits. And she's you know on board with it too now. Not that she wasn't before. She's just urging caution. It, it's scary. I, when when I first started doing this, yeah, I was worried about it. I, I was worried about it too, but I knew how great I was feeling. So I was like, if I'm feeling so great, how can this be? I'm gonna be wrong. It, it, it's weird. I, I started doing you know, Bulletproof Coffee, and, and I'd read the research. I believed the research, but I sort of was like, what if I die? Like, I'm going to do Bulletproof Coffee every morning with more than two tablespoons of butter, a lot more. I, I would do up to eight when I first started. I couldn't get enough fat. I Literally, it, it was like a drinking manna from heaven. And after a couple of years, when my cell membranes shifted, I don't want as much. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. Um, and I've heard you talk about that before. And I was doing a lot more at the beginning. I would do, I, I switched between gut, butter and ghee because I had a little bit of a dairy, still maybe have a little bit of a dairy thing, but uh, was doing a lot of butter at the beginning. And I would do four or five tablespoons. I would do about, I wouldn't do that much with the, wouldn't balance it with the MCT. I would do two to three yeah, uh, that'd at be the too beginning. Much MCT, but now I do, I do two of each. Yeah. Two, two tablespoons of ghee and two tablespoons of brain octane. Um, Every morning, and I and I realize that I have overall. So that has shifted a lot. My right. my afternoon evening intake varies. I don't keep track of it, um, yeah. but that I haven't needed. My body doesn't ask for as much in the morning. Yeah. Now, some people out there will be like, "Well, there's I've seen this in a couple articles now. Well, there's 460 calories if you use four tablespoons of, of fat, two butter, two brain octane." Um, did you gain weight when you switched to eating more than 500 calories uh, in your coffee in the morning? Oddly enough, Dave, I did not gain weight. In fact, for the first four or five months, I lost 20 to 25 pounds. And that shifts because we have water weight from day to day. Yeah. But um, so if you take out water weight, that's probably 15 to 20 pounds that I lost. And while I was doing that, it was very uh, busy uh, family and work time. And I worked out, I, I'm being conserved to say two times a week. Heavy weight training, yeah, absolutely no cardio because I've been off because I'm dealing with some uh, some knee stuff, and absolutely no cardio, just heavy weights. And I wanted to test whether eating a lower carb uh, diet would have any effect on my strength, because I also lowered my protein, and so I wanted to see if my strength would increase. What so I was doing it increased. I mean, I think I did my biggest bench uh, so far. I mean, this was we stopped kind of the heavy weight training uh, a little bit ago, but. Uh, it was the biggest weight that I benched at the time while eating this way, losing weight, feeling great, you know, recapturing, not recapturing my life, but recapturing kind of some youthfulness it's, it's and just, a mojo. There's no yeah, for that. it's just, uh, I have I, less, um, less lethargy for one brain fog cleared up. I mean, that's a lot from cutting out. I finally know what gluten does to me at least gluten that's in beer i can i definitely get i used to drink uh beer was my my alcohol of choice and i wouldn't drink that much i'd like have a beer for dinner yeah, yeah it tastes really good oh a nice cold beer for dinner right uh and i'd have half a beer and i go man i must yeah. be a lightweight i must be a lightweight i feel drunk already and then i stopped drinking beer when i got on the bulletproof cut gluten out uh when i had not beer, but I had uh, recently, uh, several months ago, I, I test, retested the gluten, had it, and I had the same effect that I had when I drink, and I didn't drink. It's like, what is it? I'm drunk, because it felt like I was drunk. Yeah. I was drunk on gluten. It's a good effect, right? It, it was amazing. I was slurring my speech. I, you know, I was having trouble walking around. It was 
bizarre. Now I know that it wasn't the beer. I wasn't, I wasn't that much of a lightweight. It was the gluten affecting me before the alcohol even did anything to me. So anyway, everybody, it's different for everybody, but that's how it was for me. On the new Bulletproof Diet Roadmap, uh, the one that's coming out in the book, um, bulletproofdietbook.com, please pre-order the book. We hit number 25 on Amazon on the first day of the pre-order campaign. I'm, I'm so grateful. I, I, this book has been so much work yeah. and just so much energy has gone into it. I, last night I was up till four before you came doing the final run through of it. And I'm, I've never been more pleased with something that I've, I've written. Uh, there's just so much in there. How many times have you read it? Uh, I, I couldn't <laughs> even count that high. But what made me think of that is that you're talking about what beer does. Yeah. And on the Bulletproof Diet, on the new roadmap, there's Bulletproof Foods that decrease inflammation, high fat, low carb, low toxin kinds of foods. There's suspect foods where you're not sure if they're going to make you weak or they're going to make you strong and you want to remove all of those and then add them back in just like you did. You know, you said, well, I, I relaxed over time as I figured out what worked for me. Mm -hmm. And then there's kryptonite foods, which, which is, you know, could we have planned this better, right? And the kryptonite foods are uh, things that generally make everyone weak. Yeah. Like there, there's no real reason to eat those foods. Well, Maybe bulletproof, but I'm not. Kryptonite proof. <laughs> uh, and it's it's really funny because beer is probably the most kryptonite food. It's yeah. got gluten and it's got the, that's ochratoxin A. Yeast it causes brain fog because of candida problems, and it's one of the quote moldiest of the foods out there. So when you combine all those things, uh, you know there's there's blocking things you can do like taking the coconut charcoal, mm -hmm. but even then. If you're going to drink, like there are just better choices, even though yes, beer is delicious and cold and it good. Is. It's the unfortunate thing. <laughs> uh, so many uh, like followers on the blog have figured out that same thing. You yeah. cut it out, and maybe you cut out all alcohol for 30 days and realize you sleep better, you have more energy, you're nicer. Uh, and so for me, it's like once a year I'll do it, and I'll, I'll you know quote take the hit. Mm -hmm. and like, well, Dave, you're not bulletproof, you're weak. It's like actually no. Like I know my kryptonite, and like alcohol, it doesn't agree with me. So there's other recreational substances you can use, yeah. like mm, coffee, <laughs> 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 that that you know make you feel good, that are just a different thing. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned a few things about brain fog. I struggled greatly with brain fog to the point I was concerned about my career when I was in my mid twenties, uh, and it was it was such a challenge to just pay attention. Uh, I had a really hard time remembering th remembering things, mm -hmm. and uh, I was I, I was actually really worried. I, I was stressed about it. What has switching over to a higher fat bulletproof diet with less toxins done for your like your cognitive and your executive function things? Amazing things. Uh, Want to talk about the whole beer thing, uh, the alcohol thing? I don't I don't have to drink in social situations anymore. In fact, I I see how much better I function and I communicate and I have so much more fun when I'm not. Yeah. Uh, that that I I get giddy the fact that I don't need to have alcohol where I used to have to have it to re have to have it but I would take it to relax me. Right. Now I'm pr I proudly say no I'm good because I can be so much more enthusiastic and energetic in a conversation and have a great time without having anything. Uh, if I do something have something now I have sake I guess because think because you it's kind of one of the more clean yeah. things but that's on a very rare occasion. Uh, so. Being on a bulletproof diet, cleaning up my brain function has been really pretty groundbreaking for, for my work. I mean, part of being an actor is memorization uh, and being also in the moment. So you have to memorize, and there are various ways that you can go through the process of memorizing. And I've tried a lot of them. One thing that I noticed is when I will work, do my work and look at my lines and kind of dissect and find the emotional uh, parts in the, in the scene, I go through it a couple times in the night before and in the morning. And when I get to work, oftentimes over the last year, I found that it's just there. It's there it, and, and it's at my beck and call. I don't have to force it. And I find when I do try to force it, when I get worried, when I tense up right before they're going to say action, remember this line, remember this line, then, then that's when I, everything tenses up and I will stumble or I'll, uh, I'll, I'll lose a line or I'll futz, you know, the, the way I'm speaking. Uh, and when I just relax and just go, no, I got it, because I do, it comes out and 
Also wonderful things happen with the body relaxes and improvisational, little, just little ticks, little natural humanistic things, humanisms um, uh, come out, which is just, that's what you want as an actor. Wow, so the ability to bring it cognitively it changed the way you behaved on uh, behind the camera. Yeah. I, I had kind of a similar experience. People don't know this, but I used to have stage fright. And mm -hmm. I know it came from like sixth grade. I was in like the school play and I forgot mm -hmm. my lines and I was, you know, forever traumatized. Sure. Uh, that kind of stuff happens. And then yeah. from then on, you get like a, an impression of this. And when I was having brain fog, I used to stutter a little bit because my brain was so slow. Like I would want to say something and then I would just not get the words out. And I wasn't, you know, really bad stutterer, but it was enough that I was self-conscious about it. Yeah. And I had some like ticks I would do, and I would like do like stimming and things. So I would I would be wooden, and I learned to go up on on stage and practiced it. And and it was only after I got my my mitochondria working that words would flow, and I could go up on stage, and I, I could not say um, and I could just like. I feel like I was present all yeah. the way, like like all the way down to my core. And to this day, if you give me beer the day before, uh, or I eat uh, low quality food, uh, there's something goes away, like a little spark yeah. um, that I'm that I'm aware of. That's like 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 at the very core of just my energy. It it's dimmer, and mm -hmm. I, my ability to emote and to project and and like to to serve the audience, I feel like it's not there. Do you have any? I, there aren't really words for this, but do you kind of feel that if, if you're off your game? I definitely feel there was just the other day. Well, I when I flew in, I, I worked uh, a couple of days ago. I worked in the morning. I had a late flight. Didn't get a lot of sleep. It was only a three hour flight from L.A. to Vancouver, but um, I didn't get a lot of sleep. And I from doing all this, you know, I have really figured out some things that don't work for me and sleep. I need sleep. I think I got three, three and a half hours of sleep and I just woke up and the coffee didn't do as much. It just didn't turn me on, turn my brain on enough. I didn't even have a very big scene. Um, but it's one of those, uh, I had one of these lines that becomes like a tongue twister. Uh, and I kept having an issue with it. We got over it. It wasn't a terrible thing, but for me it was because I'm so on it now. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't let it it didn't stick in my brain. I had to keep going over the line and looking at the script. So I noticed that the record skipped a little bit for me on that. The following day, I got plenty of sleep and woke up, had a much better day, and I had a huge five-page scene, which I have to speak a mile a minute because my character does. And it was like, it was all there. <laughs> you know. So it's 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 profound difference for me. You said something awesome. You got the words right that I've been reaching for. You said the record skipped. Mm -hmm. Like It's just a little glitch. I was interviewing uh, Tim Ferriss, and I couldn't remember something. And for me, if even one time a day, yeah. something doesn't just come effortlessly, my immediate thing is, like, I did something wrong. I didn't get enough sleep. Uh, like, something in my environment is wrong because my natural, normal state is it's effortless, and it just yeah. comes, and, and I, it, it's all here, and it's all in there, and, and I can just bring it forth. And when something interferes with that process, it doesn't feel natural anymore. Whereas before, that was it was always like nebulous. I could never. You don't know that you're not. Yeah. That that's abnormal, right. or that we can be better than that. That's why I say when the light switch turned on, I didn't realize that I was malfunctioning, or that I wasn't func <laughs> functioning as properly as I could be. That yeah. that was the astonishing thing, and that's why it was so addictive, I guess, in a way, uh, and so easy for me to keep going because I just kept. Uh, opening up more and more and more uh, and, uh, and, and um, having benefit after benefit after being on eating this way. One of the reasons that, that I believe Bulletproof Coffee has become so popular is, is that it does that. Like mm -hmm. you, you felt it within a day and I, I've realized it's, it's a gateway drug to biohacking mm -hmm. to, to help people understand, wait a minute, is it possible for me to have my brain work like this and to feel this good? on a regular basis. And now I feel like I'm trying to sell Bulletproof Coffee. I, I'm not, but well, I guess I am as part of my business. There's nothing wrong but, with that. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not this, this isn't an infomercial. I'm just like, for me and, and for so many people, you can say, oh, go on this complex program and 30 days later, magic will happen. Yeah. And maybe it will, maybe it won't. 10 day cleanse, whatever. But the first day, like, wait, something's different. And, and there's that little thing that gets ignited. And then you really want to keep it because it's precious. And it changed my whole life. It changed how I look. It changed my, my muscles. It, it changed how I think. It changed my relationships. And, you know, it's not that hard to do it. Hmm. 
the short pitch, the short pitch is, do you like coffee? Okay. And then, and then it's like, okay, this is going to change your life. You know, that's how I, I, I talk. That's how I bring it up to everybody is called Bulletproof Coffee. You put, you put butter and coconut oil in your coffee and they're like, what? And of course you get that what face. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, I've gotten much better over the year of doing the short pitch and uh, choosing the right words that people can understand and not yeah. going off, the, you know, going off the deep end because I went down the rabbit hole and love to talk and talk and talk and talk about it. And I can get very, you know, sciencey about it. Um, but that just, <laughs> people go, huh, I can see them glazing, going into brain fog. Um, so that's, that's the, that's the short pitch. And, you know, it, it, it changes, it changes people and, and whatever gets you in the door, you know, yeah. and it is a gateway drug, not just for changing your whole diet, but for me, it changed my level of awareness. Yeah. I was working on cultivating that. Um, I had an amazing trainer, Gudni Gunnarsson, who someday maybe you should, you should meet. Um, I think he's been on some speaking things that you've uh, been a part of, but oh, that's, wow. it's the not in person okay. thing. Anyway, JJ, uh, yeah, JJ I know Gerson them knows through. Everybody. <laughs> anyway, uh, he was one of my, the first uh, people to bring me into the world of being more aware of my presence and a lot of other you know, spiritual things. This has helped me maintain that and get back to that much more easily because my brain is more clear and my brain is functioning. I'm in uh, less of a state of fear and anxiety. I'm able to take more responsibility for my actions. It allows me to look inward and to see how I'm moving throughout the world uh, and communicating with people and what am I, what am I reflecting to people? Are they seeing me the way that I want them? Because it, I realized for a very long time, people were, what I thought people were seeing of me wasn't, it was this, it was the other version of me to my friends, to most of my friends. Cause I put on a, I realized when I do interviews, I put on this like other face, yeah. more of my bulletproof face. But with my friends, I didn't have that same energy. They were seeing a different person. And now I've become the person that I thought I was on the outside that I was on the inside. That makes sense. It, it makes great sense. <laughs> uh, it, right. as, as the Bulletproof Diet book was kind of unfolding and you, know, you think you know what you're going to write about, I realized that a lot of it was about willpower and consciousness. Mm. And my own path, including the 40 years of Zen training, where you really spend a whole week with electrodes stuck to your head, watching how you watch yourself. So you, you can't wiggle out of something like that, but it helped me to develop this, this inner awareness so that, that I find that when my mitochondria are working well, the cellular power plants, that my ability to pay attention to myself, mm. as well as to just perceive everything around me, it, it feels better and bigger. So I catch myself like I'll, I'll consciously wait. Like I, I'm actually thinking really negative thoughts about that person, and it's actually someone I like. And I'm like, what? Where did that come from? Like that's that's not okay. And I'll and I can shut it down. Whereas before, maybe I would have just been a little tired, and I would have noticed myself mm -hmm. doing that. And it would have just been like a negative thing I'm carrying around with me. And I I, I strive to not carry other people's baggage. Yeah. And having enough energy to notice when I'm doing it has has been helpful for me. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that I'm super stoked about because you're here is that we actually have a chance to, to hack you directly. Yeah. Should, we, should we get into some biohacking? Yes. Um, all right, let, let's do it. First thing is, um, have you heard about Pavlock? No, it isn't. It, it's a behavior change. Here, yeah. grab that card. <laughs> you shocked me. I did. Uh, this is my buddy, Manish Sethi's company. Uh, I'm an advisor and yeah. investor. Pavlov actually makes a wristband for behavior okay. change where, you know, if you're spending too much time on Facebook, it'll actually be able to post to Facebook so all your friends can see, you know, you're spending too much time and let your friends shock you. To oh, teach. your friends? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of funny. But let's don't, put down the, don't put down the cloud, somebody be hacking you and shocking you all the time. Uh, that's kind of the idea. You, <laughs> you don't want it to be hacked. But it, it's a very minor shock, like it didn't really yeah, hurt, no, but, no. but it got your attention. Yeah. The idea is to get your attention when you're doing things that are working against yeah. you. So we're not going to actually like do this kind of electrical stuff, but we are going to do some really, th really okay. cool things. So it'll take us a second to get set up. Cool. So you were just telling me, Brandon, that you were feeling just a little bit tired, like you were not quite on your game after we've been sitting here. And just so you know, if, if you're watching on iTunes or YouTube uh, or just listening in your car, we're sitting in a relatively dark room and behind the cameras here, it's super bright and sunny and we're like looking out over Salt Spring Island. 
and it's it's a bright day. So right now it's almost like being in an airplane where there's really bright light from just one mm. part of the visual field. Yeah. And it could be various things causing this. You know, you could you flew in whatever, but. Here's, here's a little exercise that's called eye palming. And I've done a lot of training my visual system. I, I haven't told that many people about it uh, and I haven't gone into a lot of detail, but my left eye tends to turn off because when I was young, my eye teaming didn't work very well. So you can't see it turn off and I don't feel it either. But my brain was spending so much energy just keeping the eyes lined up right that it was like, it's easier just to get rid of this one. So this is an exercise that causes eye relaxation. Okay. And since you're feeling a little bit of some kind of cognitive stress right now, I'm gonna teach you a real simple exercise. If you're listening, you can do this exercise at home too. And sometimes it's profound, even just in a conference room, you know, you're under fluorescent lights all day. You'd be amazed what percentage of people have visual stress and don't know it. So for about 20 seconds, rub your hands together to get your palms nice and warm. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, your hands and place the warm palms over both eyes. You don't wanna press on the eyeball at all. You're, you're cupping the eyes. They actually call this cupping. And what you do is you take a few deep breaths. Your eyes can be open or closed. There should be no light coming in. And this can reset your, your visual system and really just let the brain relax for just a second. You're not pushing on the eyes. You don't want them cold. You don't want any pressure on the eyes, just light pressure on the orbital sockets around. And after you do that for even a minute or two, you'd be amazed at how your visual performance increases. You actually can test better on some visual tests. If you were gonna go to you know, the DMV and you palmed your eyes before the test, you might get one line down just from allowing your eyes and your brain to relax. So I'm really curious to see when you feel like it's time to take your, your hands down, you can. But no, keep doing it, if it feels good, do it as long Dramatic as you want. Effect. Are you feeling different? Oh, I mean, holding my, <laughs> covering my eyes for, for dramatic effect. Oh. <laughs> it's, I'm cal I mean, I'm calm. It's calming it, and it centers me. It is calming. Now, let's see if, if there's a difference from <laughs> that. It may not even be a visual stress thing, but sometimes you'll find you just got tired for no good reason or you, your focus drifted a little bit or you felt a little bit punchy. And it's actually because you're in a place, you know, there's <laughs> uncovered compact fluorescent bulbs shining down right above you. Or, yeah, I've got nice cranial tingling, so uh, there you go. it's always relaxing. Let, let's see, let's see what <laughs> happens. Yeah. And while we're at it, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to hook you up to this computer. Okay. We're going to do the upgraded Focus Brain Trainer, but in order to do it, I'm going to find if I don't pull out a microphone here, I'm going to find a cable that's missing from our setup here, and I think it's still missing. Well, maybe we won't do that exercise right now. Ah, here we go. I think that's the right one. This is called the Upgraded Focus Brain Trainer. It's one of the, the bulletproof biohacking devices. And what it does, if I found the right cable for it anyway, what it does is it teaches you to move more blood to the front of your brain, which is a remarkable thing. And five minutes of training in this can actually raise your TOVA score. And TOVA is the, it's a standardized test of ability to pay attention. Okay. And it's actually used in a clinical setting to diagnose people with ADD. They have a low TOVA score. But if you don't have ADD and you would like to raise your attention level, it's, it's an interesting signal. Yeah. What we're going to do here is have you play a little video game. I like video games. This probably isn't that fun of a video no. game. And it feels like lifting weights with your head. It's, it's not a relaxation game. And what you'll see if you're watching, if not, I'll just explain what this looks like to people, is you'll see, hang on to that if you would, a little flashing red light here on the world's coolest looking headband. Not, it's blue. What this is doing is shining that red light into your brain. It actually penetrates the skull a little bit. And then what bounces back into the little image sensor here tells us how much blood's in the front of your brain. So we're just gonna tell you okay. by having on the screen, we're gonna have it, we're gonna have you just move forward on the screen like you're flying. Okay. And when that happens, it means you're moving blood. And when you fly backwards, it means blood's draining out of the front of your brain. More blood equals more oxygen equals more metabolic activity. And the front of your brain is where your ability to pay attention resides. It's, okay. it's your human brain. I should be good at this because I've, I've flown before. I, I suspect as much. Uh, and here we go. 
Is that comfortable? Sure. Okay. Does it, does it look awesome? Because that's really all that counts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what's going on here is when you're when you're flying forward, mm -hmm. you're literally putting putting blood into it. You don't want to get movement do artifacts. Follow, do I follow this? It, yeah. Follow so so motion? so you're doing something without moving your body, just with moving your mind. So stand up straight. Oh. It's all right. Now, without moving your body at all, just do whatever it takes inside your head. You can try breathing or not. Breathing mm -hmm. doesn't really help. It, it's a skill that you don't have consciously right now. You're building the skill to move forward. So I'm thinking about moving forward. Yeah, or thinking about, intending. feeling about, intending. Okay. It, what you, you're grasping for the new control system. Okay. The control is there to move blood inside the brain. You just don't know the label or where it is. So inside your mind right now, you're like, okay, what's going to make me move forward? Because it feels very natural to your visual system to fly forward. It's like you're soaring mm. like an eagle. When you fly backwards, it doesn't feel good, right? Mm. You, you feel unsafe when you fly backwards because you can't see what's behind you. It, it's very primal. So we're giving you a signal that says, no, no, you want to go forward. See, when you're going backwards, it doesn't, there. Now you're going forward. And that feels expansive. You're soaring like an eagle. And bam, I crashed the software. <laughs> Love live demos with software I haven't updated in a little while. Um, rather than taking a lot more time on the camera, yeah. um, let's do this after we're done shooting. Okay. But basically, what you were just doing there, you got a feel for it. Like it felt different when you were moving forward? Kind of. Okay. I was trying, I mean, it was a lot going on. Yeah. I want to do it again. You, you <laughs> when wanna, we, you, later. If you want to do it again, let's Well, no, later. I mean, okay. If you want it on, we can do it again. Yeah, you can edit. Well, yeah, we'll do that. We'll give you a. So uh, when it moves forward, I'm not controlling it. It's controlling it. I'm just thinking about moving forward when it moves forward and backward when yeah. the camera on the thing moves backward. And and so the the movement itself that's happening, is, is just to teach your nervous system what's going cool. on. And the raw data we can actually look at that too. Yeah, because I want to know. Now I'm curious. There we go. Let's do that again. So there you go, you just had a burst of blood into the front of your brain and you were soaring forward. So I apologize if you're sitting in your car right now and it's a little bit quiet. Uh, I, I want to give Brandon uh, at least like 20 seconds of, of quiet so instead of just thinking about what I'm saying, he's going to think about how he's soaring forward here. So when you soared forward, your current gain soared up to 3.2%. So there's 3.2% more blood in the front of your brain than there was before. In this session, on average, you've raised your levels of blood in the front of your brain by 0.8 or 0.9%. If you do this for about five minutes, you'll actually start to get a little bit tired. But you're learning a skill, the brain will maintain the skill. Like it's a new thing that you get. And this is incredibly powerful. If you want to be able to pay more attention at work or at school, and it's a device that you can use all the time. You can do your whole family, you can do your whole neighborhood if you want to. It's a fundamental biohacking tool. These are actually handmade and, uh, and we deliver them to people and there's a bit of a wait for them. But for me, this has really helped me be able to just bring it when I want to bring it. Hmm. All right, let's move on to some more biohacking tech here. We'll let's play with this right. tonight. You're, you're gonna stay over uh, so we've got lots of time to hack. You can just pop it off okay. its Velcro. Okay. Now, the sleep induction mat isn't something we're really likely to use, but do you use one of these guys? I do. I, I uh, use it every night. I travel with it. Oh, you actually travel yeah. with yours? Yes. I roll it up and I travel with it. I saw somebody, you tweeted a picture, somebody puts it on <laughs> their suitcase, so if anybody tries to steal <laughs> something, they get spiked, which is pretty awesome. Um, I use it every night. Uh, uh, I, I love it. it I fall, sometimes I fall asleep on it. <laughs> I'll wake up a couple hours later and be like, oh. You've actually slept on it for two hours? I think I, I fall asleep. I mean, sometimes it's 30 minutes. Sometimes it's a couple hours later when I've gone to bed and I look at the clock. And Actually, I don't have the clock on, but uh, I, well, sometimes I'm curious to see how long, so look at my phone. Okay. We have similar experiences. I, yeah. I fall asleep on mine most nights, mm -hmm. and I wake up, I think, about 20 minutes later on average, and I just toss it off the bed. Mm -hmm. But one time when I was writing the book, I stayed up basically five nights in a row. I slept two hours a night uh, from about 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Yeah. And I was, I was just in a total flow state. It was remarkable. I was using all the electricity, all the supplements, just like, like stretching my mm -hmm. biohacking legs and, and just doing nothing but writing. 
and really just absorbing myself into it. And I woke up after two hours of sleeping on this and it was like glued to my back. It was the weirdest feeling to just peel it off. I was like, I was part of a piece of Velcro. But for the most part, I, I find it profoundly relaxing. I don't have any issue with going to sleep usually. Some days I'll have a really busy brain before I go to sleep, but it just, it's almost like, I, it's another thing that tells my body it's, it's, it's time to sleep. Yeah. And it's just an easier and even easier way to, to fall asleep. And most of the time I do fall asleep on it before my 20 minutes or what I try to do every, more, every night. Yeah. It's about what I try to do 10 to 20 minutes and then roll up and go to sleep right away. When you first lay down on it, do you feel like a, a bit of a stress response? I do a little bit. My bed is not solid enough okay. to put as much pressure. I'd like to do it on the floor, but I don't do it. On, do it on the floor would be even more. But then yeah. I fall. The problem is if I fall asleep and <laughs> I'm on the floor, I have to get up into bed. On the floor, I love that because I kind of dig the, the pain sensation, yeah. actually, because um, I feel even more released with it. Um, but I do definitely feel a calming. It just helps me focus again. It's another thing that helps me focus, breathe deep, calm, and I, it helps me kind of go through uh, a practice of... I, 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 and working on going through practice of like going through the day or being grateful and those kind of things through the through the bedtime. And if I if I am on the induction mat, then I I do those things. If I just go to bed, then I kind of miss. You it's kind of a trigger. Feeling. It's kind of an impetus to do some of those things. The the sensation I have uh, when I was developing this with the the longer spikes and all is, is I lay down on it and right away I'm like I should get off this. Like this hurts, mm. right? It, and I'm like wait. And then I kind of go through this inner dialogue where my body was like ah you're gonna you're gonna die you're on a bed of nails and then the brain the mind is a little bit more like you know what we're just gonna chill and after like 30 seconds now maybe a minute like the body relaxes and it just goes limp like a puppy like if you ever yeah. had a struggling puppy and you hold them and just go Bleh. I feel like that happens to like my inner mm -hmm. Labrador uh, and that's when just the endorphins come and and, uh, and it's a peaceful thing yeah. whereas at the beginning for me it's not really comfortable mm -hmm. I don't, like I said, if I had a really flat, hard surface that yeah. I was lying against, it would be more of that. Okay. Um, although I think I get, would get, when I have done it, it's still not as bad. Um, but I definitely feel, it helps me feel where I'm holding tightness, okay. where I'm holding and restraining, because it, it helps relax so much and it calls attention, for me, it calls attention where I'm holding um, even more. Awesome. All right, the next thing that we're going to do on here and I want to make sure people are listening in their cars are getting yeah, it. So we'll do yeah. like a running narrative. Okay. And if you get a chance to see this one, uh, this is worth going on to iTunes, go to Bulletproof Radio, and while you're at it, please leave a review if this is cool, because like I'm, I'm just opening up all the biohacker stuff. So you see in the middle here, we have a really retro, this is actually a very old electrical stimulation machine. I, I think it might have come out of Russia, perhaps. Okay. Uh, and I haven't used it in a while. It's got like dials, dials and knobs and stuff. So what I thought we'd do is, is we could actually both electrify. So we'll do one bicep on, on you and one bicep on me at the same time. And we'll see basically, you know, which, which of us, um, you know, wusses out first. Can we swap sides? Uh, sure. Is it gonna... Yeah, which arm do you want? We'll, we'll, right arm. We'll balance. What's gonna be best to do, to do my right arm? We'll balance you out afterwards. Okay. I'll make sure that we do both of your okay. arms so neurologically it, it won't matter. Uh, but this is just for a demo. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is get some electrodes, and uh, I'm actually I got taller there because I'm standing on the bulletproof vibe, which you, you haven't tried yet, have no. you? Oh, we're gonna get you on there next. But first, let's uh, let's get some electrodes going. So this device is a, a prototype that is actually out of Russia, um, and it's gonna be pretty cool. So, so just left. roll up your sleeve. Yeah. So this is your left arm. Okay, yeah. and we'll do my right. So I'm gonna put this on the the front here. And we'll do this red one on the back. This will be even more of a test because I have less control. Uh, on the left side, that's the right. Left side. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all right. What we're going to do is, is we're going to we're going to show the difference. In fact, yeah, yeah. For the camera, uh, show, show off your guns on both arms, just so we can see like like what's what's going on here, right? You see the the difference? Like like you're pretty ripped, to be perfectly honest. You look like you might like play some kind of superhero on TV. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about I'm thinking about 16 inch biceps right now. Nice. We should like Thanks, measure. Ray. We should quant. Oh, nice. We should quantify that, um, like before and we after. Do we keep trying? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we should have like wrapped something around them, but what the heck? We'll just do it. And uh, I guess we'll do my left arm because I'm going to be controlling this machine with my right arm. So I'm going to do the same setup here. It's an electrode on the inside of the bicep and one on the tricep. And what these electrodes are doing is they're stimulating 
um, the muscles. They're causing them to contract and it'll feel kind of like pain, but when you look at it, it's not pain. It's just incredibly strong contractions okay. of the muscle. And what we're going to do here is, is just see how they feel. And what, what I'll do is I'll get you to the point where you say, this really, like, okay, this is as much as I'm willing to take right now. Okay. And then we're then gonna- you can step it up after I level well, off? Or? What, what you're, I'm gonna level off and then you're gonna just do a curl. Okay. Like that, right? One, maybe two. And you're gonna find that what was a 10 out of 10, like, whoa. And what this is, this is your body telling you, I can't take anymore. Mm -hmm. And then once you show the body it'll take more, it's like, oh, I was wrong. And what you thought was your max was nowhere near your max. Okay. So let's see here. I understood all of that because of the focus brain trainer. <laughs> nice. All right, are you feeling anything? No. Yes. Okay. Let's see here. How about now? Yes. All right, here we go. Ooh, yep. Okay, okay, now snap your fingers for me. Good, so you still have neurological control. Look, 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 at, look at your muscle getting harder. <laughs> okay. no, no, do a curl for me. I'm feeling this. <laughs> Whoa. Does it feel less intense now that you've just done one curl? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Oh, and then, oh, then Straight the, up. releasing back. Oh, zing right here. Whoop. Like a funny bone. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? Whoa, there goes my wrist. Oh. Straighten the wrist out. Now this is mind over matter right here. I've done this with like, there you go. So look at that, your willpower is causing your wrist, even though there's electricity, you just owned your wrist. All right, now, now do a curl for me. Whoa, it's making my wrist go back more. It's all right, you, you're gonna own that. Yeah, there's a point where it gets easier. Yeah. Did you see how intense it was? And now it's just, yeah. just from forcing your body to do something, oh, your body's- It's easier to hold to here. Yeah. And then coming back. And so I'm, I'm experiencing the same level you are, but my nervous system is trained to take more electricity. More electricity equals more myelin on your nerves. Mm -hmm. More myelin equals faster twitching. How you doing? Can you handle that? <laughs> I'm, I'm almost not even trying. It's making me contract. There you go. Ready? <laughs> now, see, can you straighten that out? You got your wrist straight. Keep it up. Don't let the wrist bend. Oh, you, right there, just, just focus on that. You you do have control of that. It feels like you don't, but you do. Like even though we're at the same level, I can still. Whoa, I'm sweating. Now. Yeah, you, your whole body is going to go into like you've had a heavy workout. You'll be you'll be wet in a minute. Ready? Can, Holy! Can, <laughs> how you doing? Tell me if it's too much. So so you should be able to curl this when when your nervous system is where it, it can be. This yet so. Whoa, my fingers are buzzing. Okay. This might be a little too much for you. It, it move your elbow down and straighten your arm if, if, if you're there. No, you, you got it, you got it, you're winning. Okay. Now, once you straighten out, we're going to get you to, uh, we're, we're gonna take the electrodes off in a minute, and we're gonna just have you. You just standing like nothing's happening. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I, when I'm up here, I have a little bit of a hard time snapping my fingers, but yeah, but my nervous system is trained. But like, this is one of the primary ways that I maintain what I do. All right, so I'm gonna turn this down and just for reference, okay. yeah, we're at about 55% of what's possible there. No, no, take your electrodes off real quick. Just you can stick them to the counter and I'm gonna turn it up. I, I can probably do 100 right now. And you, you guys may have noticed, we're not actually using this thing. This is an automotive testing device from the 50s. That's the coolest looking piece of like, you know, steampunk art ever. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this up to the point where I really have a hard time doing it. So we're at the level where we were before, and I'm gonna go a lot higher. Ouch. <laughs> so I'm at about 75% now, and on a single bicep, that's about what I'm ready to do. Your, your muscles are barely getting... All right, now it stopped hurting, so I'm gonna turn it up some more. I should be around 80%. Is it helping you if you relax? Are you doing any kind of like work? A lot of this is just my body's fear yeah. of, of this. Right, so. yeah. I realize yeah. that the more I fear of it, it's going to mm -hmm. contract harder. But if I relax and release, it's... So, what is going on now is... Um, so, so let, let's, we'll both do this. Let me take these off. And we're going to show the camera the difference between left and right. And you'll be amazed at how much blood is in one arm. Feel so, it. so hold, the, just hold up your guns here. Let's see. It, can you see a difference or feel a difference? This is the one that we were working on, and it's it's like, I mean, you're in great shape, but you've just got more vascularization, like this bicep is bigger than that, and this is your left arm. Yeah. 
right? And so for me, same thing. I'm, I'm not, I don't think my biceps are anywhere near. I haven't measured them in a while, but the difference between left and right in me, like it, it's noticeable, and this is my yeah. weak arm, right? So it's, it's kind of profound. You're gonna find that you're sore tomorrow. Oh, the tricep, this, I mean, that's getting the tricep yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, in ways that are just not normal. Yeah. So people sort of wonder, you know, yeah. when I talk about not exercising, I, I, you know, my kettlebells are right here, and I do exercise, but I do very high intensity, and you know, high intensity you can do with a kettlebell, or you can do it with electricity. Hmm. So that's one of the biohacks that's kind of amazing. And <laughs> you're feeling a little yeah. bit of, no, you were a little tired earlier. Running some current through, did that wake you yeah, up? Yeah, I don't I think it was that. <laughs> I travel, endorphin rush and everything else. I there. travel with this device yeah. um, if I'm gonna be doing a lot, because you can also do some, some less, uh, you can do some like anti-inflammation things with electrical mm. current too that are profound. And this is, you know, there's a hundred of these made, they're handmade, and it's a prototype that I, I hope will someday be on the market. Yeah. Now let's have you hop on the Bulletproof Vibe here. Okay. You've never tried this before. No. All right, so you'll notice this is just here in my office, my place where I record things. And so I'm gonna have you just give it a shot. Step up. Step up, and I'm gonna turn it on here. Ready? <laughs> Now, if you're, if you're listening on, on your radio and you're not hearing this, what's going on is Brandon's standing on this plate. It's about I don't know, two feet by two feet and about four or five inches tall. And it's vibrating pretty strongly. Yeah. Now, you don't want your- Do I look like I'm shaking? As much as I feel like I'm shaking? You probably feel it more because your head's shaking. And bend your knees just a little bit so that you don't experience a lot of acceleration of the skull. Mm. And, and try doing just a light squat without knocking this thing down. You feel it in your legs in a weird way. What's going on is 30 times a second we're, we're moving you up and down just yeah. a little bit. So you're getting a signal from your body that you're doing 30 squats a second. So I would say that my legs feel stronger Yeah. Um, doing it actually. It feels more supportive. It, it it's like I'm it's interesting on the nervous system, yeah. right? And like it, I could feel like I'd sit more in this position for longer than I, if I didn't have it vibrating. It, it's, it's probably because when you go up, you're getting a small relaxation, and, but the muscles are basically doing this 30 yeah. times a second. With this other device, we were doing about 500 times a second. Mm. Uh, so this though, when, when you stand on it, it gets lymphatic circulation. So these weird like muffin top things can really go away because you're just getting lymph out. Yeah. And if you don't have time to go for a walk to do that, what you're doing here is, is you're helping it to happen faster. Do Ujjayi breathing with that. Yes, uh, Ujjayi breathing, if, if you haven't heard of that, you'll learn this in a, a good pranayama yoga class. And it's a kind of breathing, I, actually I saw you doing that when we were doing the electrical stem thing. Uh, Ujjayi breathing is, is what they call like seashell breathing. It's through the very, it's through, in through the nose and the very back of the throat to make a special sound. You might want someone to help you learn it or Google it, Ujjayi, U-J-A-Y. And it's a profound way to go to sleep. Four Ujjayi breaths, when you're trying to go to sleep, bam, you're out. How are you feeling? Pretty Sounds good? awesome, yeah. It, it's very stimulating. <laughs> it is. Uh, so I'll, I'll work it. It's very relaxing my, and stimulating at the same time. Yeah. Which is kind of boxing room. I'll do it at, at my stand desk. Like I'll do my, my work and then I'll just walk over and do it for one minute sometimes just to get a little bit of a break. And you'll feel it in your hips and your low back. Like it, it's like a whole body massage. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I don't have time to go for a long walk because I'm on the phone all the time or whatever. Um, this is kind of part of keeping my movement happening. I'm not capable of like on a rebounder 30 times a second, but this is 30 times a second. So it's just, yeah. it, it's a shortcut, right? Now, what else should we do? Pulse the electromagnetic frequency? Ooh, it's really light. Let's play with PEMF. This is uh, from my buddy, Dr. Bill Pollock at Soma Pulse. And this is something that also came out of NASA. It uses a pulse the electromagnetic frequency. Basically, these are electrical mag electromagnets. And you can stack them up in a pattern that creates the, the strongest field. And they, they increase circulation and increase nitric oxide levels in areas that are injured. So they speed healing. And when you have sore joints, uh, even some kind of strange headache kind of mm -hmm. things, you can use these to improve how you feel. Okay. When I travel, 
it's very common you'll see me wearing like cargo pants there's one of these tucked in the front pocket and i have these over my lower spine you can wear them 24 7 they kind of eat recyclable batteries so i have a little battery charger so i can keep the nine volt batteries charged um, but lots of people who have this other weird pain that's been around for a long time in three four minutes they feel it and if you leave it on there it, it tends to get better over time so this is called the Soma Pulse, and there's a code to save like a lot. It's code is amazingly, it's either bulletproof or BPE. And Bill will be there demoing these, so you'll actually get to try one. And we'll have some mats there as well. Uh, in fact, there's one in the back, I don't know if we're gonna have time on this video to do it, that are whole body pulsed electromagnetic uh -huh. frequency devices. So hang on to those okay. coils. I don't know if you have anywhere that feels like it wants help. If not, put it right here over well, like your navel. Yeah, and we could actually wrap it on your knee if you wanted to. I don't know if you'll feel it in the amount of time we've got. And uh, you could actually put one on either side of the knee with the smooth side towards the body. Uh, that would be the right way to do this, but in the, in the time we've got, it probably won't work. If you're listening to this, this thing's about the size of half an iPhone, a little bit thicker. Yeah. It's very portable, but it's something that speeds healing and reduces pain. It's kind of a, a really neat device and one that I've actually gifted a lot of the Bulletproof team with one of these because they feel better. This device, old school biohacking. If you're a regular listener and you watch the show on YouTube, you might have seen this flashing light behind me. Well, what this is, is from probably the early 80s. It's a, an antique bar game. One of the first memory training, memory testing games out there. And it's coin operated. So I, I'd, actually, I'd ask you to play this real quick. Okay. So all it is, four buttons. You just have to remember the order that they light up in. Here, yeah, we'll set down our Soma Pulse here. And you'll get to play with that tonight. We'll give you lots of time with it. All right, you ready? Yeah. So we'll make sure that our cameras can see you here. Yeah. All right, you got three seconds once it lights up. Pressure's on. Thousands are watching. So, so if you're 40, you probably remember this game from a bar somewhere, which, which is kind of cool. And you'll see here, if you get a score between 57 and 90, they call that average, but there's marketing in that. A lot of people don't get that high. And here, Brandon, who actually is Superman, just passed average. He's excellent. Like, that's pretty impressive for, like, your first game ever. Ah, uh, no, I'm listening to you talk. Nice. I was distracting you, too. No, you, you, 110. 110 is oh, actually... Uh, check excellent. It out. Excellent. So, excellent. Rock, rock on. That's actually Thanks an that. amazing score. Um, but this game is going to be there. I'm totally biohacked. Yeah, you could do this on your iPhone, but it's, really? a, it's amazing with the sound. It's, it's just fun. So, we're going to have this old-school biohacking technique. Over here is a stress meter uh, on the other side, uh, which is kind of cool. And this thing uh, is, will also be there. You can get this in a tiny sensor for 20 bucks. We're bringing the old school tech in because biohacking has a history that goes way back. So I don't know if it's really worth seeing how stressed you are, but let's give it a try. All right, let's see. I think it's, um, let's see, deposit quarter. All right, now just put your fingers on those two things. We're gonna see how stressed you are. That's really an annoying beep, isn't it? What? It, if this was in a bar... That didn't stress you out already. <laughs> wow. It, if this was in a bar, wouldn't that, like, everyone would look? So you have normal stress. I think most people do on this. This isn't that functional of a thing, but it did take your quarter. Well, actually, it was my quarter. <laughs> but it's really interesting how this stuff from 30-plus years ago has made its way into... There's a video game based on this technology. This is called Galvanic Skin Response. Hmm. So we think biohacking is something new, but getting real-time feedback was was possible a long time ago, but it took these big clunky things and the signals were not very good. And you have things like Lumosity now and dual in-back training that are far superior to this. Yeah. But it's still interesting to see what's your working memory? Can you change it? So these are part of the, the brain side of biohacking. And, and finally, just for fun, I don't think we're gonna have these, th these here. Captains of Crush. Oh. Tim Ferriss hooked me up with one of these things in his quarterly.co package. Um, I'm about to do my own quarterly.co thing uh, because Tim was kind enough to introduce me to, uh, to those guys. So what this is, is quarterly you get a package of specially selected things uh, from someone like Tim or now uh, from me. And what it contains is stuff that you would just like because you follow the person's blog and whatnot. So Tim sent one of these high-intensity grip strength trainers. And 
I've been training myself just a little bit. I ended up buying the whole set. And it's amazing just the difference. I, I've gone from a relatively strong grip to way stronger on here. So uh, let's see, the hardest one of these though, if you look at that thing, it's like 365 pounds. There's a registry of people. I, I don't even know how to like really bend good. it very much. I um, should try with my left, even though my bicep's not <laughs> the grip strength. But, but let, let, let's, let's try one in the middle and see if it's closable. I'm, I'm curious. I'm really into quantifying things. I have a digital grip strength meter. Okay. Oh, that, that one's just crazy. Let's see if this one's doable. Ah, 99% closed. Did a good burst. There. I think this is about 200 Back pounds there. of pressure. Not bad. You're not training your grip, and you've got a grip that's about as strong as mine because you're lifting because you have a really good trainer. I'm, I'm guessing here. So, Brandon, gotta ask you the final question for the Bulletproof Podcast, yes. the one that I almost forgot to ask. <laughs> I was waiting to see. I would have said something. <laughs> that question, the final question, is one you know because you listen to the podcast, but your top three recommendations for people who want to perform better at whatever it is they're here to do. So you want to kick more ass, do these three things. This is tough, and I've tried not to over the, the year of listening to the podcast <laughs> program and try to figure out what I, what I was going to say. Um, I just finally crystallized on the seaplane ride over. Um, and I think number one is taking responsibility. Um, so taking responsibility for our actions um, has been, made a huge impact on my life and being able to let go of a lot of things and, and move forward. Um, taking responsibility when we think other people are causing us or a bad day. And realizing that even if a guy cut you off, uh, you know, at least you had the... Uh, the, uh, the ability to swerve out of the way and yeah. prevent him from hitting you and hitting somebody else. So take responsibility and be grateful that, that you had the ability to do that. And you don't have to make that um, ruin your day either. Um, did, did you ever just like, response of anger out of that. It's like, yeah. you idiot. It's like, whoa, okay. That guy obviously was not paying attention. I'm glad that I was able to pay attention and avert disaster here. And just that keeps you going on your way. And what does that anger serve of... So it's taking responsibility for your actions. You can't take responsibility for him and his driving, mm -hmm. but you can take responsibility for how you, you know, react to the situation, right? So, I love it. Uh, then next would be, um, everybody's said, many people have said it, but gratitude. Gratitude and love, um, right? So I started really fostering that and making it a more daily practice uh, a few months ago, and it's made an, another huge impact on my life and my ability to stay positive and happy throughout the day and to not find and get into little fits of um, woe is me or um, if I find my brain going around and around in circles trying to solve a problem, um, even though it doesn't make sense, I go to gratitude, find something to be grateful for in the moment, mm -hmm. um, has nothing to do with what I might be thinking about, but it pulls me out of that, the, the, the circular thoughts. And I'm trying to push those thoughts, those th problems that I want to solve and, and have a specific time in the day that's all about figuring out whatever that problem is that I wanted instead of while I'm doing something else and that thought comes into my head, distracting me from both things and not being able to focus totally. Um, the gratitude helps me do that, get back to awareness and push that to another day um, and helps me be more happy in my relationships with myself and with other people. And the last would be, I guess, um, fear. Pay attention to your fear. Um, fear stops us from doing a lot of great things. Um, it's something that I've had to find where the fear resides in me. Uh, even though I've been uh, fairly success successful in my career, fear creeps in. Doubt, self-doubt as an actor, uh, you know, how you present yourself to the world, what do other people think of me? Um, but I found that fear doesn't serve me. When I find it, when I have the awareness to look back, when I take responsibility and find the gratitude, sometimes I find the fear underneath there. And that just helps me open up and just experience more and, and share more and... Um, you know, have a happier, upgraded existence. Those are some massively awesome answers. And seriously, uh, you're, you're sort of living the superhero ideal now. I mean, you're, you play them on TV and in movies, but, <laughs> but seriously, like, like those answers are exactly what makes people, uh, at least in my mind, you know, that, that is a superhuman performance. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's more important to be able to, to grasp what's going on internally because what you've just described is, is a person who's, who's happy and resilient. And resilience was never a strong suit for mm -hmm. me historically. Mm -hmm. And to be able to build as a practice is, is remarkable. And, and I, I mean, you, you're living it, man. It's, yeah. it's awesome. And I'm, I'm impressed. Well, as cheesy as it is, when I went through the process of 
becoming Superman on, on camera, I had to investigate what it would it be like to be the most powerful being on earth, um, basically godlike, yeah. um, mentally, emotionally, the way he moved. I did through movement training, all the kind of things that I had to just kind of go there and, and be there. And what, it, what I came out of it, uh, feeling a couple things. One, I was worried that I would be, um, people would perceive me because I'd learned all these things about myself and the state I wanted to be in. But then I thought people would think I was trying to be, like I thought I was Superman. So I started to come in, build, oh, go wow. inward. For, as a result, after the movie, um, hide and things. And that's been a process over the, the years that I've come out. And it's okay to be me, right? It's okay, to be, it's okay to be an awesome human being because we all have the ability to do this stuff. I'm not any more special than anyone else. I have different circumstances and different history, history of my life, but we all can achieve all of these things, you know? So don't sell yourself short. Um, we can all be Superman, and that's Superman, Superwomen. That's, that's my goal anyway. And that's what Bulletproof is all about, which is why I love it. Uh, I, I'm grateful that you, you took the time to come up here and to be on the show. Brandon, thank you. Thank you. I'm a Bulletproof babe. And, and we totally and didn't... You need that t-shirt. You need the Bulletproof babe t-shirt. Oh, my God. I'm taking a oh, note on... Marketing. I'm taking yes. a note on that one. Um, thank you. So, so pe people, <laughs> people really should know that like we don't sit ahead of time going, ooh, let's talk no, about talk each about other's products. Anything. See the head of foam that's formed on it? This is similar to what you get with a latte.